Millions of Americans are living on the edge paycheck to paycheck. With 30% of all service sectors, retail food restaurants closing and going out of business. Things can go downhill really fast. If they really want to stimulate the economy, they should reduce the taxes and the government. You don't rob people of their future and put that money in your pockets. Employment, stagnation, inflation, oil prices, PMI. None of that matters in determining the Democrats call for even more stimulus. It will all come down to the midterm elections in 2022. The Democrats will take any measure, spend any amount of taxpayer money, tax any source of revenues, in order to maintain power, even if it ruins us all. What is the end game? It is to trigger a crisis of astronomical prices and wreck supply chains, where the government will be forced to implement some kind of temporary rationing program until the economy can get on its feet once again. There is no fiscal stimulus. All of the money goes for political payoffs that then pump money back into the DNC. The vast majority of the funds end up in very few pockets. It's graft or corruption on an epic scale. Taper, stimulus, stagflation, trade tension with China. A black swan event will take everyone by surprise. It always does. We are circling the toilet bowl and no one knows who will flush us down or when. There is no way back now with trillions and trillions of debt. Most of the fools have no idea how quickly they can be out on the street with no savings and no plan B. New iPhone and year behind on the rent. Evicted and living in a tent or a rundown Winnebago, going from one Walmart parking lot to the next. Homeless cities everywhere. Woke and broke. Sad ending for the once great USA. Place your bets on the most corrupt and wasteful outcome possible. It is what they have done since BAMI and they won't stop until we stop them. It now takes one dollar of new debt to create ten cents of national income growth. There will be no taper. Ever. The only way the Fed can taper is to crash the markets. The panic will scare investors into the perceived safety of the US Treasury's market so they can purchase the debt instead of the Fed. Buyer beware. This is all part of the show. The intention is to blow up and destroy the economy. Then, the guys behind the curtains will make sweeping changes that will benefit all mankind, themselves first in a very big way, and then build back better, for themselves, of course. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. The US Titanic is finished. The only thing left is to create division, chaos, and war. The psychopathic crowd is quite accomplished when it comes to these endeavors. They won't stop until the bond market blows up. 1.4% bond yield is a green light to spend wildly. This is easily the most corrupt treasonous government to ever exist. Evil has never had this kind of power before in history. It is just getting used to driving it. Like a fighter pilot getting used to a new fighter jet. You haven't seen anything yet. The thing is, this time is different for how this will affect the economy. I don't think looking at historical patterns that far back will help much. The periods from those charts were before the US economy was highly financialized and it had a stable financial system. Deregulation plus financialization means the system is way more vulnerable to shocks. Sure it will, just like Zimbabwe. And just like Zimbabwe, those who print the money will come out rich while the rest of the country gets screwed. What's going to be remarkable about this round of stimulus is not only how ineffective it will be addressing any concrete issues the nation has, but also the rapid inflationary effect it is going to produce, given pre-existing conditions. The only thing missing in this bill is a rider for guitar lessons to 20 giraffes and badgers. 
It is literally blank check trillions to corrupt left-wing NGOs, core, moneyed interests. Basically, one last orgy of treasury looting. This stimulus bill allows the IRS and government to monitor all of our banking transactions. Yup. Every single payment, deposit, and withdrawal is under scrutiny by the government and IRS. Pushback rises as the Biden administration seeks to monitor all bank accounts as part of $3.5 trillion packages. Time to panic as the Federal Reserve starts reverse repo. We never did learn from 1929. They will print over every Minsky moment that comes up until then. Issues will pop up because of too much debt making the system as a whole too fragile. Pulling forward consumption only works for so long until it becomes a losing game. An analogy would be trying to climb up a hill when you're carrying a two-ton weight on your back when you're already obese, too much fat, because you've bailed out every failed enterprise for the last 20 years. The US federal debt has climbed from $17 trillion to almost $29 trillion today. It is growing at a rate of over $1 trillion per year. Now that we have seen how the debt has come to this dangerously high level, let us look at the reason. So far, we have had only a cursory glance. It began with Reagan, who introduced the debate about tax cuts and debt. Reagan said, we presented a complete program of reduction in tax rates. Again, our purpose was to provide an incentive for the individual, incentives for business to encourage production and hiring of the unemployed, and to free up money for investment. Now the subsequent rulers of America reverse the tax cuts by increasing the tax rates, but this shows us one major reason why the debt levels in America keep rising. Whenever a government cuts taxes, let us take, for example, the Trump administration, which gave tax relief to big corporations and the super-rich in order to entice them to invest more, but we know this is an old script. What really happens is, that tax revenue is one of the key sources of raising income for expenditure for any government, and when you give a tax cut, you are basically reducing your tax revenue. When you reduce the tax revenue, you reduce the money available to spend on public expenditure. So when the Trump admin rolled out the tax cuts, it later realized that it needed to raise money to finance public sector spending, and so, it went back to the same corporations and super elite to take a loan from them, in the form of government treasury bonds, etc. Can you see the flaw in the system now? The corporations and the super-rich, who got a tax cut by the government, ended up giving a loan to the US government, and now the US government owes them, not only the loan, but also interest on that loan. According to government estimates, the total cost of tax cuts alone is $1.6 trillion. This means the government needs to raise an equivalent amount of debt to finance public sector spending. Going from middle class to just above poor can happen real fast. Our masters have broken money for their benefit at our expense. Garbage in, garbage out. The massive state apparatus on tip of that isn't helping, but it's a symptom, not a cause. We must reclaim money if we are ever to be free, prosperous, and civil. Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. All is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This Everything Inside Me channel, see you on the next video. Stay safe and healthy.